Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way, till they reached a city to dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. For he satisfies the longing soul, and the hungry soul he fills with good things. Some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, prisoners in affliction and in irons, for they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. So he bowed their hearts down with hard labor. They fell down with none to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and he burst their bonds apart. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful, wondrous works to the children of man. So it is Saturday. Today we are going to the flower shop and um, what else are we doing? Going to the tea shop. I'm gonna go pick up that sign I talked about. So I read a bunch of Victoria last night. I'm on page 61 now and I am still enjoying it. I it wasn't a struggle to get through at all those pages that I read last night. I will say that if you are someone who is very familiar with Victoria's story, particularly her ascension to the throne, then this will not be anything new for you. This this telling of Victoria's story is like everything you've heard before. Um, all the documentaries, all the movies that are out about her, all the TV shows, all the other historical fictions. It's very to the book what happened, how it how it happened from what we know from history and from her diary entries. Uh, the writing is nice and detail oriented but it's not too dressy making it easy to get through. It's very to the point, very respectful to how Victoria may have felt um, in these certain situations. It does also have a sort of really honest portrayal of her and her life and her be coming to the throne rather than dressing it up a bunch. It doesn't really glorify it so much as shows what a struggle and how confusing this time might, ha might have been for her. Definitely just naturally a fantastic coming of age story without even the author having to do anything to make it a fantastic coming of age story. It just naturally is because she's 18 years old when she becomes Queen of England. <sighs> So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's perfect if you just want like a, so far, pretty accurate um, telling of Victoria's life. You just want to like take a glimpse into the past in a sort of easy and simple read. This is definitely a good one. Like I said, doesn't add anything new to Victoria's story. It's not like a super unique um, telling of, of her story either. Uh, I'm still at the part where she has just become queen, so she's kind of figuring it out, figuring it out all her responsibilities, um, trying to gain independence from her mother and from Conroy and sort of trying to figure out who she could trust and who just wants to control her. Yeah, it's really interesting how how her life played out and how you can see how the Lord really put who needed to be in her life at certain times. So yeah, I recommend it so far if you like, if you just want a simple historical fiction and you're interested in Queen Victoria. So this is the sign that I picked up. Um, we're planning to have it displayed at our wedding and then I want to hang it somewhere in my house. I might put it right on top of this toy box and move all those pictures and cards and things. Um, so it's just a Song of Solomon scripture. It's so pretty. I sort of want to have it propped on top of some wood crates in front of the head table, but we'll see where it fits. And the wood is like so solid. 
Like it's super heavy when you pick it up. It's just like really good quality. So I'm excited because I was looking for a, someone to make a sign with this particular scripture. And then it, she just had it posted on her Facebook page. It was so perfect. And the good news is, Ashley came over. Hey, Ashley. I don't wanna be in your video. Oh, look at that golden light. Please. That golden evening light. We just had ramen, and we are super full now, and Ashley's playing Stardew Valley on my screen. And I kinda wanna take a nap. We ordered our wedding flowers today, and I'm super excited. I can't even tell you particularly which flowers are in my bouquet, but it's similar to what I had planned, but also different. It has a really sort of um, green and white wildflower look, so the bouquets are gonna look like as though you went into the field and like handpicked everything and tied with some white ribbon. Um, and then the boys, I don't know what the word is in French. You know, the boy flower things that pin to their suit. Theirs are gonna be tied with twine, so it's gonna have a sort of rustic look. So I'm excited. It was super stress-free and the florist knew like everything. So it was just not hard at all. It was really nice. I forget the other thing I was gonna say. Um. Hello, welcome <laughs> to my vlog. <laughs> the good news is Ashley came over. Do it. And we had ramen. Cut. Don't mind my fancy makeup. Uh, my huge eyelashes on. This is like a whole new thing for me. I am not used to this. Um, but like it's kind of fun once in a while. Like it's like well, this is my practice bridal look. That's what's happening at this moment. Um, I just wanted, I've also got my robe on because I'm freezing. So anyway, I still did want to talk about Victoria. I have been reading more. Whenever I pick it up, I just keep flipping through all of the chapters, like I'm just really enjoying it. So we're well into Victoria becoming queen. Um, I still stand by everything I said before. I did realize this book is much longer than I thought. It does run about 400 pages. Doesn't look that big. Um, these long paperbacks always look a little bit shorter. Um, still very detailed, um, but not too much, the, um, not too fancy writing. It does go into... Um, nice detail of the atmosphere sort of describing what the rooms would have looked at like in what palaces and what sort of vibe would have been in what palace um and then describing what monarchs did what in those palaces before her um describing how she might have felt about certain relationships and certain people in government definitely goes into all of her weaknesses um as a young woman coming to the throne it's a very coming of age story if you don't know um like i said this is perfect if you want to learn more about Victoria or more about the start of the Victorian time period, I do anticipate it's going to go into heavy detail in all the parts of her life. I don't actually know exactly. I believe this goes into, um, sorry, no, it goes, I believe this goes into detail, um, right into her marriage, I think, um, as she becomes a bit older and more mature. I think that's where this novel is going to take us. So if you're not familiar with Queen Victoria, this is a great way to get some pretty historically accurate information about her in a really entertaining and engaging way. I had to switch arms because my tripod on my camera makes my arm tired. Um, also goes into all the sort of scandals that were going on in this time and, and people and lives of people of power. And what sort of things were not tolerated in that society that would be more tolerated today is super interesting as well. I definitely fly through the chapters. It does have sort of not a suspenseful feel, but like it's a fast paced feel, but also getting through a ton of information and moving forward in her life um, really fast with accurate information and describing the environment around her and describing what she may have been feeling and what other people she's dealing with may be feeling, um, but also moving quickly. The shop chapters are short, so it's like chop, 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 you get through, which I really like. I'll be sharing on Goodreads like, my feelings about it and then I suppose. So yeah, this is just kind of like a fun thing you know, having like a woman who's so much younger than me in such a place of responsibility and power and how overwhelmed she must have felt, especially having grown up 
in such a sheltered and controlled environment, just not having been properly prepared whatsoever for what she was taking on, not knowing who to surround around her and just being in this full-blown rebellion against her mother as she takes the throne. Definitely some good things come out of that that I have seen, um, but also some bad things because she goes so far as to rebel against her mother that she doesn't see all of the sides and see all of the wise ways that she could be, you know, building her court and what connections she could make. Not that she doesn't make good connections, but she is so young and doesn't really see the full picture. Doesn't necessarily take advice from certain people that maybe she should. Doesn't heed certain warnings, you know, things like that. Um, so it's, it's interesting that such a young woman was in a place like that and not only being in such a place of responsibility, but also using that time of her life to rebel, um, too. So, yep, yeah, I'm getting tired. And I'm gonna eat some more macaroni tonight. Read some more of this book. So I just sort of wanted to take a moment and talk about my feelings about my recent engagement. Um, I know that's probably not what you're looking for in this reading vlog, but I promise it'll be quick and then we'll get right, right, right back to all of the other vloggy and bookish things. Um, I kind of wanted to give this update because I know I have a lot of friends who subscribe who I haven't really been super in touch with lately. Um, especially online friends as I haven't been super active um, on social media and that. So I just wanted to take a second to just talk about how faithful the Lord has been um, in my life and Zach's life and just like surrounding us. I wanted to talk about how we got to this point, what my feelings are being engaged to Zach and just sh just explain to you how the Lord has just been so present, like just so there. Um, just feeling his presence, I guess, and just looking for him. So wedding planning is like super overwhelming and stressful, but it is the most blessed position to be in. The most, the most hopeful spot I think I have ever been in in my entire life. Just, it's like this light that is just like at the end of the tunnel, this light that is just here, like this excitement that the Lord is leading us to. It's just so special to be around our families. Um, just they're there 24 seven loving us and supporting us and preparing us for the big day that is coming. Both of our families, we just feel just so there and just like it, it I can't describe the love that we feel right now. Um, just with their advice, and I mean, not everyone's advice is super helpful, but like just with their ideas and their help, just preparing for the day. So Zach and I have been dating for a few years, but I think it was only really in this last seven-ish months that it really set in, I know for me, that this was the person I wanted to spend the rest of my life with, and I was ready to make that step, I guess, is, is what I'm trying to say. Like, it's, it's like it was this epiphany that was like, yes, this is the one to be my life partner. And just knowing that the time was coming, that I was ready to make that, that commitment, that vow. Um, neither of us are perfect. We've had insane ups and downs and including like going through the hardship of losing my dad last year was hard on us but brought us so close and so close to the Lord too. He like I can't describe like we've just been up and down and had all kinds of things going on but like we just always show up for each other I guess. We are just have always done it all together even through times where we've been distant with each other or times where it's been a dry season, like, it always just comes back to, like, we are ready to be life partners, and we've already sort of done that. I think being drugged through the wasteland, the wilderness, that intense hardship and suffering is what really made it obvious to us that we were ready to experience all that hardship together um, for the rest of our, our lives. Um, through the suffering and the pain and then the happiness and peace and comfort that will come we want to do it all together and I think that mourning my dad and losing him and the pure terror that that was for us to experience together really opened our eyes to yes we want to do this 
together no matter what comes we want to do it together i think the lord really blessed us in setting it into our hearts um at this around the same time because the time that he proposed was the time that i was feeling really ready to make that commitment that my heart wasn't chasing a million other things it was like we needed that confusion and hardship to really just open our eyes and let our hearts know that yes we are ready for that commitment now after all of that. Friends will come and go, um, and, and you learn to be okay with that, that friends come and go, but family is forever, and I think I know that I want Zach to be a part of my forever family, that he will not pass as, you know, your friends will pass or coworkers will pass, but as someone I want there forever with me. Um, I realized 100% there would be no one else for me, there will never be anyone else for me that, God willing, <laughs> but um, my heart used to chase so many things. Like, although I loved Zach, it used to chase money and success and attention and careers and travel. And just like, while I loved Zach dearly, my heart and I had so many dreams and my heart was like everywhere. And so I don't know that either of us were really ready. Um, while we loved each other, we're really ready for that next step. If I'm going to explain it plainly, I think I was always trying to be my own god. I wanted, you know, to have full control over my life and chase all these dreams and do all these things and not really slowing down to listen for maybe what his plan was for me. It is really heavy trying to be your own god. It is a heavy burden to bear and it leads to pure destruction. But despite it all, the Lord has set simplicity into my heart and quiet into my heart. And I can't describe that. I, I can't describe the way he has changed my heart and made it new through all the rubble. It's just been amazing. I remember being at rock bottom, having lost my dad, being like crushed by that grief and also so confused and crushed by my wayward heart. And I remember just thinking, just getting down on my knees and praying, Lord, like your thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Over mine, let like let my heart let go of that and let your will be done. Like I just sort of begged, like I'm done chasing my own agenda. I am done worshiping the idol of myself, done trying to be my own God. Like, or my heart is yours, Lord. And I just fully surrendered, just fully surrendered. Um. And then this, the way the spirit has worked in me has been amazing. That power and love and self-control that the spirit brings. It's been painful, this process of purification, of sanctification, this process of my heart being made new. Um, it's been hard, not easy. The way that it kind of, that change just is really intense on you, I guess. But it is peace and it is comfort um, over the grief of loss um, and over the grief over sin that repentance and that redemption that takes place in your purification is just pure peace. It's just this confident hope that covers you through it. The, de the desires of my heart that I prayed would align with his has just made my heart so new and the way I view life so different. I don't care about making money or money or advancing in my career. The way that I used to. I want to live slowly, not having that attention on myself the way that my heart maybe would have wanted before or did want before. All glory be to God and not to myself. I mean, I'm still flawed, so flawed. I mess up. We are, our hearts are just naturally wicked. And so of course we, we stumble, but we must just learn to just walk and step with the spirit and it becomes so much easier to not stumble. I just want to be near to Jesus and to serve my fiance and to just be able to serve my husband as a whole God-honoring wife. And I don't see children so much now as like cute little beings that other people have. Um, and I always thought that I wanted no children or just one child. <clears throat> But God has really changed that desire in my heart and the way that I see children. I see them now not just as like cute little guys to hang out with when people bring them around, but as true, the, the most blessed gift from the Lord, the truest blessing, like the just the most amazing thing you could ever receive from the Lord, the most amazing gift from the Lord. I just want to work with my hands and just make my house a home for a family and just bring all glory to God through all that I do. 
I desire nothing for my own gain, nothing for money or grand adventures because the grandest adventure I ever could have would be following obediently the Lord's plan for me. It, there's nothing that I could ever dream up that would be as amazing as the specific calling and the specific path that he has laid out for me. I now see the value and the purpose that God has in designing marriage in this holy union and and in the vows we will make before him, the promises we will make to him um, and to each other. By the power, by the power of the Holy Spirit, um, by his will, let us walk the straight path he has set for us. Set by him for us. It's honestly so exciting to be led by God's plan, to wait for the right one that he has set for you, set aside for you, and to just, you know, have your will aligned with his and to see the blessings that are in that. I'm just overwhelmed with excitement in being able to just marry the one and just, you know, follow that will, that, that path that he has set for us. Um, and I know it's not gonna be easy, like life has not been easy, but I'm excited and I feel blessed that I get to experience this. Um, and it's just a cool thing to change my last name to. I'm pretty excited about that. It's been it's been well over a month now that we've been engaged. And I'm it just hits me like a brick still how excited I am to marry this man. Like what an inexplicable inexplicable blessing from the Lord this experience is. Like we are getting married. Wow. I'm so excited to marry the love of my life, if you couldn't tell, the only, only one for me. As it said in Matthew 19, 6, so they are no longer two, but they are one flesh. Let in what God brings together, no man separate. Sin is real and Satan is still prowling. He is still powerful, but there is nothing he can present that is new. He just dresses it up. You just have to stay in the Lord, drawing near to the Lord in his word. There is nothing good in us but Christ, as, as Paul says in Romans 7. But we have nothing to fear with Jesus. There is nothing to fear. He says over and over again, fear not, I am with you. He will walk us through the valley of the shadow of death and I will fear no evil. Though my heart wants to at times, I will fear no evil for he is with us. So thank you for listening to that. If you couldn't tell, I'm very excited and overwhelmed. I will keep you just up like, I will keep you informed as I go along. One morning, a little rabbit sat on a bank. He pricked his ears and listened to the trit-trot, trit-trot of a pony. A gig was coming along the road. It was driven by Mr. McGregor, and beside him sat Mrs. McGregor in her best bonnet. As soon as they had passed, little Benjamin Bunny slid down into the road and set off with a hop, skip, and a jump to call upon his relations, who lived in the wood at the back of Mr. McGregor's garden. That wood was full of rabbit holes, and in the neatest, sandiest hole of all lived Benjamin's aunt and his cousins, Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. Old, Mr. Rab Old Mrs. Rabbit was a widow. She earned her living by knitting rabbit wool mittens and muffetees. I once bought a pair at the bazaar. She also sold herbs and rosemary tea and rabbit tobacco, which is what we call lavender. Little Benjamin did not very much want to see his aunt. He came round the back of the fir tree and nearly tumbled upon his, the top of his cousin Peter. Peter was sitting beside himself. He looked poorly and was dressed in a red cotton pocket handkerchief. Peter, said little Benjamin in a whisper, who has got your clothes? 
Peter replied, The Scarecrow in Mr. McGregor's Garden. What a joy these books are. The illustrations make me feel just so cozy inside and just so hopeful for the promise of spring. These mischievous little rabbits, I want to give them all just a big hug. And I kind of wish that I could live inside a tree and sell herbs and rosemary tea as well. I'm checking in again guys. Today's been a weird day. I'm just sitting here. I've got a chai latte. I just finished eating a butter tart. Um, I'm just revisiting some Roman scriptures here. Um, I just finished my work from home day. I might tie up a few loose ends there. Um, I have read some more Victoria and I'm getting close to about halfway done. Uh, my thoughts are still the same. It is having a bit of suspense. I can see some different um, tactics that the author Daisy is like using to um, make what you know is going to happen based on what you know about Victoria um, feel like suspenseful or like, oh wait, is that going to happen? So I do appreciate that. Um, I have decided that I'm going to wrap up the vlog now and I will start on a second part um, and I will finish this up so that you can all know my thoughts about it and the rest of my reading journey with it. Um, but I didn't want this to be too long and I'm sure it already is so long. Um, I only have the mental capacity to do vlogs right now. Um, I just don't have time or energy to like plan out more like structured videos than this right now and I just love making vlogs and it also gives me a reason to be making sure I am reading even when everything is so crazy. Thanks so much for watching guys. I will see you soon in part two and let me know down below what you are reading. If you're reading any historical fiction, I would love to know. Bye.